Alright team, welcome back. So now that we have our control form, we're probably going to want to start working on the action that we'll ultimately call the, our Spring Boot API to then persist our new project task to the database, right? And we're probably going to want to do that uh, next. But before we actually go that far, I do want to also start perhaps setting things up for us to work with Redux. Okay, because remember at this point we're gonna use Redux uh, along with React to create our, our front end. All right, so um, before we actually submit anything to the back end, I do wanna I do wanna get you guys to uh, set up your Redux store. Now, Redux is a state management library. That's the simplest explanation of what Redux is and what Redux does. So basically Redux keeps our state on the client side, right? Because our API, our Spring Boot API is stateless. It doesn't store any sessions. And it's gonna be Redux what stores the actual state of our application, right? Like if we were doing security here, which we won't, but in, the, in my Udemy course we actually do, uh, you keep track of who's logged in, uh, you keep track of, of what's actually on the state of the application, right? So for this, you need to configure a store. And the reason why I want to tackle Redux even before we do the API calls from here is because uh, some of the things that we're going to need is to actually also load errors into the state so that we can display errors. If you remember from our, from our initial demo, whenever we submitted run data on the form, then we were able to see the errors coming up, right? So this is why we want to have our store so that we can actually get that payload of, say, error or error messages that we get from the server and then actually loading them onto the component. And I promise this is going to make more sense as we start coding it. So the first thing that we want to, that we do need to do whenever you are setting Redux up is you need to start working on setting up the store okay so what we're going to do is here on the source folder and for now we can create we can close out of all of this and we're gonna go on to our source folder and I'm just gonna create a new file called store.js right now in store.js we're gonna import the following from Redux we're gonna import curly braces we're gonna import create store apply middleware and compose all right and we're going to talk about these as we start coding them from redux perfect all right the other thing that we want to import is thunk thunk what we're going to use thunk for is to basically dispatch actions from uh say from our api calls onto our store and again once we start working on this you guys will see what I mean what I mean I just don't want to give you like a super huge explanation uh, I'd rather just talk about it as we're actually doing it right so now that we have this in place the other thing that we will need to import is our root reducer root reducer is basically a, the meeting place of all the reducers that you're gonna have in your application now for this we need to come back again to our source and we're gonna create a new folder called called reducers because we need to actually have uh, say a reducer that combines all, all of the reducers and then as we create individual reducers based on the use cases that we're implementing then at that point uh, that's the reducer that we're going to use as the main one right because remember or not remember but in, in redux you can only have one reducer but then uh, there's a way to actually say have multiple reducers so you don't have just one reducer with a bunch of use cases right so we're gonna import this here but before before we do that let's go ahead and create that one here we're gonna create one reducer and it's gonna be called index.js and then here in this reducer in this main reducer we're gonna import combine reducers and obviously from redux all right and then uh, we're gonna say import. Oh no, we don't need to do this anymore, sorry. Now, then we're gonna say export default, combine reducers. And then here, as I mentioned, 
we're gonna be adding all of the reducers of your, that we're gonna be working for, uh, that we're gonna be working with. And you know, as we start growing our application, this will become more, or it's gonna become clearer. So now that we have that, then we're gonna just import root reducer from reducers, okay? And how does it know that it's a root reducers? Well, it's because here in this one, this is where we're actually combining all of the reducers. That's how it knows, all right? Okay, cool. So then we have to give our application an initial state. So we're gonna say cause initial state, and then we're just gonna give it an empty object, okay? Then we're gonna say const middleware, and then we're just gonna create an array with thunk in it, just in case we wanna use other middleware in the future, right? Then we are going to do the following. We're gonna say let store, and then we're gonna do a, f a couple of things here, just so that this application uh, works with uh, other browsers. Um, again, this is just one way of doing this. Obviously, there are other ways of going about this, but I'm just going to do this to ensure that this works with other browsers. Now, I haven't really looked into the new Create React app, and I see, I see here that it has browsers lists, and I'm not sure how, I haven't really looked into how this, is, this, this works and if this accounts for all the browsers, but I'm just gonna work the same way as I worked with the previous version of Create React App, which is the version that I have in the, that I'm using in the, in the project that we built in, the Udem, in my Udemy course. So I just don't wanna bring a whole lot of uh, confusion here, right? So that's why I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna do it uh, assuming that there's uh, no additional support for other browsers. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to open my app here and I'm going to go to Redux. If you go to Redux, at some point, you're going to see this um, message here, here that says store not found. Make sure to follow the instructions. If you go to the instructions, then basically it's go, it's, it, it kind of tells, tells you how to create the store. And one of the things that you need to do is obviously add the Redux Dev Tools which is, uh, again, something that I, a few videos ago, uh, recommended that you guys install. So all you have to do literally is just copy this here, and then right over here in the store.js file, you guys are gonna say const react redux dev tools, and then you're going to just uh, assign this here, right? And you'll see why in a second. Then, um, now that we have that in place, we're gonna say the following. If window, and this is all vanilla JavaScript, right? Navigator user agent includes Chrome. Now, if it's Chrome and it has the React DevTools, if that's present, because remember, if you are using a browser that is not Chrome and it doesn't have this, obviously this is gonna be null. So what we're, all we're saying here is that if those are present, then we're gonna create the store the following way. We're gonna say create store. Okay. And then we're gonna pass it the root reducer. Okay. And it actually tells you, even tells you the parameters that it takes. Then we're gonna pass it the initial state. And then we're gonna use Compose, which we uh, imported uh, uh, before. And this is basically how we're gonna compose a store. First, we're gonna apply middleware, okay? Because remember, we don't know how many how many parameters we can have here, so we're just using var arcs here. So we're gonna apply middleware, and then we're gonna apply the Reacts, the React, um, Redux dev tools. All right. So basically, this is how we compose our store um, whenever it is Chrome and whenever these th this uh, extension is present. All right. Then we're gonna do else. If it's any other browser, I'm gonna say store, create store, and then we're gonna say pretty much the same thing. 
Actually, I'm just going to copy and paste this here. And all we're doing right now here is that we're just passing on the middleware. At this point, we are assuming that this is null. And remember, Compose will not take, cannot take like that parameter as null. That's why we need to. So let me see what I did wrong here. I'm just going to copy this here. Okay. And all we need to do is get rid of this here. I'm not really sure what it is that it's not liking here. Sorry, guys. It's getting kind of messy right now. Okay. I'm just missing a parenthesis here. There you go. All right. So basically, we're saying else, just assume that this doesn't exist and then just create the store this way, right? And then we're just going to export default store. Great. All right, so now that we did this, then the next thing that we want to do is actually make sure that we uh, enable the store in our app.js. But first, let me save this. All right, so in our app.js, we're going to have two more imports. We're going to import provider from React Redux. And we're going to use this to set the store in our application. And then we're going to obviously import the store from store. Perfect. So the next thing that we're going to do now is that we're going to wrap the entire app with the provider tag. OK, then I'm just going to cut this out of here. And just put it right over here and again the entire app needs to be wrapped with provider and the, the provider is what defines oh my god sorry what provide what defines the store that we're going to use which is what we just configure in store.js i believe that with this in place right now if we go to our app then we should start seeing and now you should see this and you should see the state, right? And this is actually really good. Start does not have a valid reducer. Make sure, yeah, this is fine because we haven't passed a reducer here. And actually, why don't we play with it for a little bit? Again, this is this is YouTube here, right? So uh, videos can go can be as long as we want them to be, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create our first reducer, but not before uh, creating a few things that we need to have in place first. Here in the source folder, I'm going to create a new folder called Actions. All right, and in the Actions folder, I'm going to create a new file called Types.js. Basically, this is the type of actions that we're going to be dis dispatching uh, when we, when we uh, let's say, dispatch to our reducers. Again, completely out of context, but you guys will see how we are going, going to go about this. I usually like giving you guys some like initial context, but at the same time, I don't want to go too deep into it until we're actually doing it because these things you don't really get until you're actually coding them. All right. So basically types is a type of action. And all we're saying here is that this action is called get errors. And this is the action that we're going to dispatch whenever we try unsuccessfully to, to save on, let's say, an object, a project has object that doesn't comply with all of the required parameters, right? So with this in place, then we're gonna go to the reducers folder and we're gonna create our first reducer. And this is gonna be called the errors reducer. This is a reducer that we're gonna use every time we have errors. And this is how we're gonna say pass errors to our state, okay, dot JS. Perfect, all right. So first we're gonna import the action that we just created, get errors. And then we're going to obviously bring this from things, act, yeah, actions, types. And I promise as we keep, keep on practicing, all of this is going to start making sense. If this is your first time with Redux, React and Redux. Then we're going to say const initial state. And this is basically the initial state of our errors. So basically at the, at the very, very beginning of this, we have no errors. Export default. F 
function. And then we're going to say state state equals initial state. And then we're also going to pass it the action. OK, in this case, the main action is to get the errors if there are any. OK, so we're going to use a switch statement here. And then we're going to say action dot type. Basically, this makes sure that whenever we uh, dispatch, we take the action to type and obviously uh, act accordingly. Right. So uh, you all, always when you're creating a reducer, you need to have a default action here that basically returns the state. OK, perfect. Then the other one, the other action that we're going to have is case get errors, which is what we just imported. And then what we do whenever we get errors is that we return the action payload. OK, so we're going to take a, a quick minute in actually uh, understanding this. But now that you that you type this, then the next step, which is super important, and I've, I've already gotten a lot of feedback. People get super confused. Like, I don't see this. Like, I don't see, say, the um, the object in the state. It's because this is a crucial st step before you actually set up your store with your reducers. And is that in, in the index.js, you always, always, always need to actually bring all of the reducers that you create, they need to meet here, all right? And you need to give it a name. Errors, and in my case, I'm just gonna call it errors, and I'm gonna say errors reducer. And again, remember, I'm using auto import here. Now, now that this is in place, if I go back to my readout store, and if I go back to the state, then you see that I, have, that I have errors here. Now, let's dissect this for a second. Errors, that name that you see here comes from here, okay? And the main store that has all of our state is literally this index.js, which we then put over, um, which we then put over here, right, when we're creating our store. So basically, we're telling them, our root reducer contains errors reducer and if and if there were on any other reducers which there will later on in the course you'll see what i'm saying but this errors literally comes from right there and when you say this that state that errors that's what you're getting now the errors they pass the payload to the store so basically in our action once we start trying to pass things onto the back end if there are errors then it's going to load that json object over here and then we can then use that to trans pass pass that from the state on to wherever we want to display it all right and if i think that well this is an object right here so i think if i do say um error let me see let me see if this works test error right we're saying that our initial state has an error of uh, an error and test error here so if i'm correct we're gonna see that here all right and i'm sure this is already starting to make sense right this is basically how we pass things onto our state and it depends on what we want to do with this action right here and what it is that we're going to want to pass on to this as a payload and that's what's going to be loaded in the state every time we dispatch and this is a keyword every time we dispatch this action right here all right all right guys so you should be here everything should be uh working great and you guys should see this uh, test error here uh in the next session then we're going to start wiring things up for us to actually uh persist onto our database thank you very much